salutations, respect and love. I am Scott. You are in the Prague corner, fresh off the eclipse yesterday, which was just awesome. But today, man, this is a good episode where I am ranking all 25 albums from the one and only Straubs. Man, one of the things I love about prog rock is just the wide variety of acts that are out there. You know, there's so much variety in the prog rock tent that half the bands I consider prog, uh, about 50% of prog fans dispute whether they're even prog or not. And uh, I guess Straubs might fall into that category a little bit. Uh, they were formed in 1964 by Dave Cousins, and uh, they were kind of like a bluegrass band. They called themselves the uh, Strawberry Hill Boys. Uh, they had the one and only Sandy Denny in the band at that time, and uh, they recorded an album that never got released. Well, it got released later on. It is in the ranking. We're including that. The only thing we're really not including is 1970s Just a Collection of Antiques and Curios, which was a, primarily a live album, but uh, it, it is notable in that it was the first album that Rick Wakeman was a member of the band in. Um, and a lot of people think of Straubs, they just think of Rick Wakeman. He was on exactly one studio album, man. One live album, one studio album, and one track on the second album. So, you know, get over it, man. He was the, only there for a short, short while. But that's where I came in contact with Straubs is because of Rick Wakeman. But they've got 25 albums out, and I can't wait to talk about these. And we are starting at number 25 with the album that they recorded back in 1967 in Denmark with Sandy Denny. It's called All Our Own Work. Finally saw the light of day in 1973, and it's really just more like a demo than anything else. It's not great, but there is uh, Who Knows Where the Time Goes, a song Sandy Denny wrote, and uh, it appeared on Fairport Convention's third album, uh, Unhalf breaking, so that is a well known track. The band at this point, early Straubs, was Sandy Denny, Dave Cousins, of course, uh, Tony Hooper, and Ron Chesterman playing the double bass. Yeah, it's more like a historical document than anything else. At number 24, another relic, another historical document. And I'm going with Heartbreak Hill. This was released in 1995, but apparently most of this stuff was recorded back in 1978. It was supposed to be uh, uh, an album that never came out, and and for good reason. It's really not that great. Uh, the band at this point in time was Dave Cousins, Chaz Cronk, Joe Partridge, Andy Richards, and Tony Fernandez, who was Rick Wakeman's drummer. Um, yeah, it's weird, man. You've got uh, We Can Make It Together, which is kind of a decent rocker. Starting Over is not bad. They would do that song again on a later album. But the only song I really kind of like on this is Something for Nothing. Not a bad album. We're calling this their 15th album, by the way. But, you know, that's anachronistic for sure. At number 23, we're going with Barack and Roll. And this one was accredited to the Acoustic Straubs, who at this point, it was basically uh, Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, and Brian Willoughby, um, and a whole bunch of strings. A lot of violin, viola, and cello as they go about and do a bunch of older songs. This came out in 2001. We're calling it their 16th album. And you know, this is basically uh, the Straubs Unplugged doing their greatest hits. You've got You and I, you've got Ghost, you've got Benedictus, Evergreen, the Golden Salamander, all the greats here. But, you know, it's just an unplugged version. It's interesting, but it's not great. At number 22, I'm going with Prognostic from 2014, calling this their 22nd album. And this is basically just uh, another odds and ends where half of this is live and then half is reworked versions of songs from Heartbreak Hill. And then you've got the uh, the great epic prog track from The Broken Hearted Bride, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, Live versions of The River, Down by the Sea, Blue Angels, Heroes Theme. It's decent, but I don't really understand why this album even exists. You've got uh, Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Kronk, Tony Fernandez. Uh, Andy Richards is on here. Joe Partridge and uh, John Hawken make an appearance. 
I just don't understand why this album's out there. It makes no sense. At number 21, another album I question its existence and why it's around. It's uh, Hero and Heroin in Essentia uh, from 2011, their 21st album. And obviously, this is a reworking of their classic Hero and Heroin album, which I have a feeling might rank pretty high on here. Uh, obviously, if you're reworking an old album, you must feel pretty good about it. You know, this is all that classic material from that album from 34 years prior. It is nine minutes longer than the original, so there are some reworkings here. Uh, the main difference here is Dave's voice has completely changed in the interim, you know, three and a half decades. Uh, the band at this point was Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Cronk, Tony Fernandez, and the keyboard player on this was none other than John Young from Life Signs. Very cool. Uh, good sounding album, but again, I don't really know why it needs to be in the discography at all. At number 20, I'm going with Blue Angel from 20. Oh, three, their 17th album. And basically, a lot of these songs came from an album called The Bridge, which was uh, uh, Cousins and Willoughby. And then you've got uh, Blue Angel. The title track was from uh, Dave Cousins' 1972 solo album, Two Weeks Last Summer. Um, the band at this point was Cousins, Willoughby, big shocker, he's in the band with all his songs, Dave Lambert, but you've got uh, a lot of different guests from, uh, you know, Ghosts of Straub's Past, you've got Blue Weaver, Chaz Kronk, Rod Coombs, uh, Richard Hudson, Tony Fernandez all contribute. It's a weird album. It's okay. I don't love it. At number 19, another weird one. It's a Dancing to the Devil's Beat from 2009, the band's 20th album. Uh, you've got Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Kronk, Rod Coombs. On keyboards on this album, for one album only, you had Oliver Wakeman. So, you know, the circle is now complete. And Ian Cutler contributes really, really cool violin parts on this album. It's this album's kind of got like a split personality. Some of it's a little more folksy sounding, like older Straub. Some of it's you know more of that AO, AOR kind of rocking stuff. Oh, how she changed from the first album. They do a new version of that. Don't know why exactly, but this time Dave Lambert's singing it. Uh, I guess Tony Hooper sang it on the on the first album. Revenge can be so sweet is a good song. Uh, Beneath the angry sky, but to me the best thing on here is the Pro Patria Suite. Eight minutes of awesomeness at number eighteen. Their most recent from twenty twenty three is the Magic of It All. Uh, their twenty fifth album. This came out on Cherry Red. Apparently. Uh, Dave has now announced that he's no longer touring. Hopefully, he'll still put out albums, but if not, this will go down as the last Straub's album. This is a weird one. That for whatever reason, there's no Dave Lambert. There's no Chaz Kronk. I, I guess they're uh, you know out in the wilderness. They're in exile right now. So for this album, you've got uh, uh, Dave Cousins, John Ford, who I don't even know what he does on the album, and the return of Blue Weaver. Yeah, he's back on this album. And then it's fleshed out with a bunch of South African musicians uh, who get credit, but I've never heard of any of them. So this is kind of like a Dave Cousins solo album. Uh, but there's a couple decent tracks on here. Ready, Are We Ready is good. Uh, the Time Has Come for Giving Back's all right. But uh, kind of a letdown after a couple of really strong late career albums. I'm not in love with this one. At number 17, I've got Don't Say Goodbye from 1987, the band's 13th album. And uh, yeah, this is a weird one here because uh, you know some of these tracks were supposed to be part of that uh Heartbreak Hill. At this point, you've got uh, Dave Cousins, Richard Hudson, and Tony Hooper in the band with uh, guests from Brian Willoughby, Rod Demick, and Chris Perrin. I don't think this album was ever released in the U.S. because I've never heard it when I was getting ready to do my Straub's rankings. I knew there were a couple albums that I had not heard from them. This was definitely one of them. There's no Chaz Kronk on here, but there are some good songs on here, man. Evergreen is fantastic. Uh, Big Brother's really cool. A Boy and His Dog. Uh, it's, it's not a bad record at all. Tina De Fada, very cool. Interesting artwork. A little different sound for the band here. A little more straightforward rock, but I like it. It's decent. At number 16, 
It's uh, the, the what was supposed to be the band's last album, uh, Deadlines from 1978. It was their 12th album. And I guess they tried to do that Heartbreak Hill after Deadlines and it didn't quite work out. Um, Deadlines is notable for it being at the tail end of the golden era of Straubs. And you've got uh, a lot more Dave Lambert on vocals on this one. I guess Clive Davis from Arista uh, signed the band after they had been on a and for years and years. And he wanted more Dave Lambert, so I guess uh, Dave Cousins gave in to that request. So you've got Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Cronk, Tony Fernandez, and a couple keyboard players since they didn't have like a regular keyboard player at this point. Uh, Robert Kirby and John Meeling. Some good songs on this album, though, boys and girls. It, it isn't as good as the ones that came right before it, but man, No Return is a good song. Joey and Me, The Last Resort, but my favorite track on here is Words of Wisdom. It's a good album, not a great album. At number 15, we've got Ringing Down the Years from 1991, the band's 14th album, and this is the same lineup as uh, Don't Say Goodbye. So you got Richard Hudson, Dave Cousins, uh, Tony Hooper, Brian Willoughby, Rod Demick, and Chris Perrin. And there's some real killer tracks on here, man. Uh, the King is awesome. Got some female vocals making you think of Sandy Denny again. Grace Darling. Yeah, you know that song from Ghosts. Yeah, they do it again for some reason. Uh, Tell Me What You See In Me is fantastic. Forever Ocean Blue, really, really good. So the stronger tracks on this album really make uh, for an enjoyable listen on here. At number 14... From 1977 is Burning For You, their 11th album, and uh, not a great album, although there are a couple really good tracks on here. Uh, the band here is Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Cronk, and uh, Rod Coombs. Man, uh, uh, Bar Cole, I don't know how you say it, Bar, Cole, Bar Carol or whatever, man, that song's fantastic, kind of making me think of old Straubs there. But Alexander the Great's on here. Not the Iron Maiden song yet. Predates it by a few years. But this is a fantastic song. Uh, the, the, the opening track, Burning For Me, is good. But there's some clunkers on here. Uh, Carry Me Home's terrible. Goodbye, I don't like. Uh, keep on trying. But uh, like I said, the good tracks on here totally make uh, this worthwhile owning. Just, if, just for Alexander the Great. If for no other reason, at number 13, I'm going with the band's 10th album uh, from 1976's Deep Cuts. Yeah, we got that same lineup of uh, Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Cronk, and Rod Coombs. But uh, you've got some great songs on here, man. I Only Want My Love to Grow in You, Hard, Hard Winter, Charmer, Besides the Rio Grande. But, you know, these these Straubs albums seem to have like one or two like amazing killer uh, dynamite tracks. And a Deep Cuts is no different with a song called Simple Visions. Check it out. Definitely the keeper on this album at number 12. I'm going with No Madness. And this is their ninth album from 1975. Probably most notable because you get Rick Wakeman coming back for one song. This was the band's last album on a and &M. No full-time keyboardist at this point in the band. That's why, you know, you got guests like Wakeman showing up. Uh, but there's some cool tracks on here, man. I think No Madness gets a bad reputation because of the greatness that preceded it. Uh, it's not as good as some of those records, man. But there's some great songs on here, man. The Golden Salamander's on this record, man. That's an awesome track. Uh, Absent Friend is really cool. Kind of a blues track. To Be Free is Dynamite. Tokyo Rosie, I guess, is the song with Wakeman on it. I like that. My favorite song on the album is The Promised Land. Good record, underrated record, probably their most underrated record, actually. At number 11, uh, from 2004, it's Deja Fu, their 18th album. And uh, this was another one I had not heard, so I needed to spend some time with it. Uh, and I dig it, man. This is the return of the Ghosts lineup, right? Uh, Hero and Heroin and Ghosts. So you got Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Crock, Rod Coombs, and John Hawkin on keyboards. And it doesn't disappoint. This is a solid record. Uh, Russian Front is fantastic. Uh, Under a Cloudless Sky, This Barren Land. Yeah, this uh, version of Straubs was not as keyboard heavy you don't really hear a you know any mellotrons in the background or whatever and uh, you know dave cousin's voice is starting to by this point in time by like the early 2000s you can really hear some deterioration 
in his voice, but I still think his voice sounds cool, so I don't mind it. Some people might. Whatever. We're in the top 10 Straub's albums now, man, at number 10. Let's go with the debut album from 1970. This is Dave Cousins, Tony Hooper, and Ron Chesterman, and uh, it was uh, uh, produced by Tony Visconti, engineered by Gus Dudgeon, and I, even John Paul Jones shows up on this. I guess he plays bass on one track. I have no idea, but Oh How She's Changed is the, the song everybody knows off this album, but I really like The Man Who Calls Himself Jesus. I think that's a cool song, and I like how Straub's always, uh, you know, weaves in kind of Christian themes and stuff into their music without beating you over the head with it. Very cool. Um, I do like this first album. It is a good debut album, but they did release that one before it. Uh, uh, recorded one before it that didn't come out till 73, so... It's their debut and name only, I guess. At number nine, let's talk about a new one, man. Uh, Settlement came out in 2021. It was the band's 24th album, and it was an absolute uh, achievement for a band that had been around that long to put out an album this good. Crazy good. You got Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Krog, Tony Fernandez, and now you got Dave Bainbridge playing keyboards and guitar. You've also got John Ford on bass on this album, and it's produced by Blue Weaver, so it's like all the parts are there, uh, but does it succeed? Oh, yeah, it succeeds, man. It opens with that incredible title track. It's so good. Uh, Judgment Day is fantastic. You've got a couple instrumentals on this album that just really get me going. The Visit's really, really good. Uh, we Are Everyone is fantastic. Just a cool, cool late-era album from the band, Fabulous, but they have one album from their late era I like even better. Not this one. Number eight. <laughs> I'm going with their second album, Dragonfly, from 1970. Uh, their second album, yeah. Did it come out in 70 or 71? I think it came out in 70. So we've got Dave Cousins, Tony Hooper, Ron Chesterman, his last album with the band, and Claire Dennis on cello. She would show up on a couple later albums as a guest. Uh, kind of nice... Uh, timbre the cello in them their music dragonfly is probably best known as the uh, the moment they uh, uh, introduced rick wakeman to the world with the song the vision of the lady of the lake it's a 10 minute song that features rick wakeman as a guest musician he would be a full-time member on their next album but there's some other good songs on here till the sun goes shining through that's good josephine for better or worse i like the title track's cool not a bad record kind of folky kind of laid back real chill record i dig it though at number seven from 2008 it's the broken hearted bride their 19th album and this was a real surprise for me because i had heard this album before but I didn't love it, and I think I was dead wrong about this one. This one is really, really solid, man. There's only one song I don't like on this album. It's the second song. I think it's called Christmas Cheer or something like that. It's one of the times where the Christian themes don't quite work for me. But there's some great tracks on here. Call to Action is fantastic. Shadowland is cool. But this album is remembered and needs to be remembered primarily for Through Aphrodite's Eyes. One of the best songs Straub's ever did. It's just fantastic. At number six, the best of the late era Straub's albums came out in 2017 and it's called The Ferryman's Curse. It was their 23rd album and it is fantastic, man. I love it. You've got uh, Dave Cousins, Dave Lambert, Chaz Cronk, Tony Fernandez. Again, with Dave Bainbridge, he co-writes on five of the songs on this album. Uh, really, the only letdown on this album is the Dave Lambert song, Ten Commandments. I don't care for that one. Love the title track, man. It's kind of a sequel to that uh, vision of the Lady of the Lake uh, from the second album. Very cool. But then you get songs like The Spirit Moves. Wow, 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 wow. What a great song. Bats and Swallows and We Have the Power close out the album. But now I'm going to mention the song you need to check out from this album if you haven't heard it. It's called The Nails from the Hands of Christ. Oh, oh man. Yeah, what a, what a song. What a song. What a good album, man. Here we go. The top five Straub's albums, boys and girls, at number five from 1973. It's Bursting at the Seams. This album uh, 
Hit number two in the UK, big old hit for the band, uh, their, their fifth album, and it was a big smash hit, primarily because of two songs, Part of the Union, hit number two in the UK, Lay Down, hit number 12 in the UK, both are awesome songs, this is where the band was starting to like, kind of be like a normal band, a little more rocky, uh, a little less folky, but there's some other great tracks on here, like Flying, Lady Fuchsia, of course, Down by the Sea, The River, uh, Tears and Pobbin, the winter and the summer. The band at this point was uh, Dave Cousins, uh, Dave Lambert, John Ford, Richard Hudson, and Blue Weaver. I guess John Ford and Richard Hudson would leave the band after the American tour. I guess they were uh, not getting along, so they formed a band called The Monks, doing like uh, satire punk stuff. Very cool. I like it. But uh, yeah, that's bursting at the seams. At number four, I've got From the Witchwood from 1971, uh, the band's uh, third album. And this is the Rick Wakeman album. Uh, he doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, it could have really been anybody on keyboards here. Uh, if you're expecting, you know, the flash of uh, Fragile, you're going to be disappointed. Band at this point, Dave Cousins, Tony Hooper, John Ford, Richard Hudson, and the aforementioned Rick Wakeman. This album hit number 39 in the UK, and there are some classic uh, Straub's tracks on here. A Glimpse of Heaven, The Hangman and the Papist, Sheep, The Shepherd's Song, I'll Carry On Beside You. Beautiful tracks, still a little folky here, but uh, a dynamite record uh, at number three. Oh, man, these top three are almost interchangeable for me. I think most fans of this band have these three albums at the top. So here we go. At number three, I've got Grave New World from 1972, uh, the band's fourth album. And uh, the one they put out right after Rick Wakeman left. So they hired Blue Weaver uh, into the band from, uh, it was in a band called Amen Corner. This was the last album with Tony Hooper. I guess he would come back later on. Uh, so you got Cousins, Ford, Hudson, uh, and Blue Weaver. And this album is perfect, man. It really is. These top three are, all three of them are 10 out of 10 records. You know, I could have gone either way on any of these, but uh, this record, Benedictus, come on, man. Queen of Dreams, New World, Tomorrow. Is it today, Lord? Every track is great. I love the little acoustic uh, interludes that go on in here. It's well-structured, it's well-thought-out, well-sequenced, uh, well-performed, and well-produced. What else do you want, man? This album hit number 11 in the UK, and rightly so. At number two, I think you guys know what the top two are, right? I've got Ghosts from 1975, the band's eighth album, and arguably their most progressive album, Chaz uh, Kronk, Rod Coombs, John Hawken, The Two Daves, and you got uh, Claire Dennis on cello on this album. Let me tell you something, man. This album is just phenomenal. Uh, the title track is just great. Lemon Pie, Starshine, Angel Wine. I was actually just listening to that uh, right before I hit record. The Life Auction, and of course, the two tracks people probably know the most from this album, You and I and Grace Darling, but whatever, man, it's just perfect from start to finish. Uh, Ghost is dynamite. Yes, it is. And that leaves us at number one. You know what it is. At number one, I've got Hero and Heroin, the band's seventh album from 1974. This is where all the classical uh, elements started coming in into the band uh you know you hear a whole wide array of keyboards and uh, you've got a uh, dave cousins dave lambert and uh, chaz cronk this was his first album with the band john hawk and his first album with the band rod coombs you've got claire dennis again but it's the songs right i mean who cares who's playing on these albums right ultimately it's about the songs and what songs we've got here man autumn Shine on Silver Sun, Midnight Sun, Round and Round, Lay a Little Light on Me. It's just phenomenal. This album uh, hit number 35 in the UK, and I think that's a shame because uh, it's one of those albums that uh, has stood the test of time. It's the one album by Straubs I keep going back to time and time again. So that's why I've got Hero and Heroin at number one. <coughs> yeah, that was great. You know, it took me a while to do Straubs because, like I said, there were a few albums in their discography I really hadn't heard, so I wanted to
do my due diligence and get it right. Hopefully, uh, that's close. I don't know, man. But anyway, I love you guys. I will see you soon. Peace in the Middle East. Free the Ukraine and God save the king. Save King Chucky. Save him. That boy needs your saving. He's got the cancer and he could use all your thoughts and prayers. So yeah, I say let's bring him to America and we can get him to church on Sunday and we can pray over him, lay some hands on him, lay some hands on that boy, get him all well, and then we'll dance. We'll do some chants and incantations. We'll dance with snakes. And before you know it, the house of Windsor will be just fine once again. I will see you punks soon.